80% of sexually active people in the United States will have a genital HPV infection at some point in their lives. The human papillomavirus is the most important factor in the development of cervical cancer. It is also the agent responsible for venereal warts in both men and women. But cervical cancer is a cancer that develops from a sexually transmitted infection. By having one sexual partner in your lifetime, that risk of exposure is very low. But once you have two, three, four, five partners, exposure could be as high as 250 individuals. Now condoms, while they are helpful in preventing the transmission of the virus, it is not completely foolproof. The condom does protect against several sexually transmitted infections, HIV, gonorrhea, chlamydia, certainly. But in terms of HPV, any kind of skin-to-skin -skin contact will predispose that person to infection. I don't want to give the impression that it's only women that get was, affected or I infected. I was gonna give, get to the... Uh, <laughs> to that. If the current trends continue as they are now, the annual number of cancers in the mouth and throat attributed to HPV is expected to surpass the annual number of cervical cancers by the year 2020. There's no known screening test for HPV in men, so as women will get their annual pap smears uh, to determine if they have infection with HPV or precancerous cells on the, in the genital tract, that doesn't exist for males. The CDC does recommend HPV vaccine for the boys as well. Gardasil is a quadrivalent vaccine, and that covers about 70% of the cervical cancers and about 70% of the genital uh, warts. So why have they not embraced it? I think it's still taboo. It's a, still a, a taboo issue. Anything that has to do with sex, anything that has to do with uh, young people having sex,